Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Four Winds TH36. She's imaginative, she's inspirational, and I reckon she could be part of your future. So I want you to imagine that trip that you've always thought uh, you wanted to do, or maybe that adventure that you maybe didn't have the confidence of doing it could be because it's out in the ocean or maybe it's just way far away over the horizon and you've always had some sort of limiting belief whether that be your skill set or your boat let's face it and now take all those dreams and put it into something like this that we see just here because i think what four winds have done with this th 36 um, they are allowing you to expand your horizons think about it like that we have got a ginormous amount of space on this thing because we are a power cat and we've got accommodation. We have two proper cabins, we've got two private toilets, air conditioned, generator, outboard power, and the list goes on. So in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through this boat, touching on all these points of which there are many um, that I think are gonna be really serious reasons for many of you to envisage, envisage? you know what I'm trying to say, upgrading into the future. Uh, because if you've come from a sports boat, if you've come from a, 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 a stern drive or an outboard mono hull style of boat and you're planning ahead for the future, this is, this is really cool. So let's list out a couple of those reasons that I'm thinking and I've noticed uh, about this boat so far straight away. And then we'll take you for the detailed walkthrough. And there is a test drive. We've done it. We've just been blasting around. We go into as much detail as I possibly can. And um, that's a separate video to this one. So you'll just have to keep watching. I'll link to that at the end. And my name's Dan Jones. You're watching Dan's Boat Life. And welcome to Miami. I'm feeling a little bit Latin at the moment. Everyone's got, got the music going. It's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying my time traveling through America. And this is my first time to Miami. So we'll see how much fun we have in the next few days. Um, but the points I want to make to you, a power cat, stability, it really is noticeable. We have so much beam, about four and a half meters, 14 foot thereabouts, and we can just get a huge amount of people for entertainment. But the stability is noticeable when you are cruising around the boat. The other thing, fuel efficiency. It doesn't burn a lot of fuel for the amount of boat that you're cruising around with and the amount of people that you can load on board the boat. So you've got efficiency, you've got space, you've got real estate, and I think for the first time for a power cat of, of this uh, you know, of this category, and in maybe this is a new category that Four Winds have actually created, it's sexy. It's really good looking. So there, there's quite a few you know, power cats coming out of the Asian market that I've seen, and they're there and they run well and they're functional, but they don't look like this. You, know, you can look at this thing from every angle and it's a very attractive boat. So come on with me, come, come up to the bow and we'll do our best to show you all the elements that are unique about this boat um, because you can use it you could compare it with something like say a sea ray 400 slx which is a big american uh you know style of day boat with a triple rig on the back and this feels like you've got more space you could compare this with um, a 42 to 45 foot traditional mono hull boat and just look at the amount of space we have up here. Come, come in closer and let's just show you all the details of what's going on. So um, underneath the floor just here, we just have a shallow storage. You're not actually gonna get too much in there. Um, we have a Dometic drawer fridge just here. That's just one of the pullout jobbies just there. The style of the upholstery is such that you're gonna be comfortable. You've got a, a decent backrest, a bit of lean, and lots of space to put your feet out forward. And then you would easily get six to eight people comfortably up here in the bow. Um, I don't see any facility for a pop-in table, but maybe, oh, sorry, sorry, right there in front of me. It's been a long day. I got up at four o'clock in the morning, so just go easy on me for that one. Um, so the uh, electric anchor windlass is operated from the helm, but the chain locker just goes below and is accessible on both sides. We are actually deployed with the bow anchor, but we also put a stern anchor out on the beach because that is something you would do on this boat but wait until you see the back of the boat because you could actually spin this thing around and just step off your ladder if you know what you're doing now for storage you could use this boat for a long holiday 
you know, I'm thinking Australia, but you guys are thinking America. If you want to go down to Key West, or if you want to go further down to the Caribbean, um, you could load this thing up with all your long-term storage because there is super deep storage. It's also very functional for fenders, for lines. There's a sunshade, which is deployable up here on the bow as well. So we don't have to be sitting out here in the sun. So all of that stuff can go on port and starboard. We've got drink holders on either side. We've got the speakers. And then we've got some intakes uh, for water. Uh, not here, this is the waste. I saw water, it was underneath this seat from memory. And this is the other waste out for the other toilet because there's one on either side. Drink holders, and then we're gonna go through the windscreen. It's got this wind door here. So that's just magnetically held in place like so. And then when you've got it stowed or locked, you've got a lock just there so the wind's not gonna blow it through. Big drain, if you did happen to take a wave through the bow, you're gonna drain it through here and then straight into the ocean. And then this centerpiece, it's clipped so you can actually drive with it open. We have been doing that today and it just folds like so. And then there's two locks just there and there. Two windscreen wipers. And the windscreen itself, it's reasonably low, keeping the lines. The wind vortices do go up a little bit though when you're driving. So it's not an issue for people my height and a few inches taller. We're gonna go into the cabins and the toilets towards uh, the end of the video because I'm gonna keep covering the decks for now. But come in and have a look at the helm. Come in and just frame all that up so everyone can get a feel for it. Um, functional, great visibility, and you feel powerful on this thing because it's a big boat. Um, you, you have a lot of capability on a thing like this because imagine the amount of people uh, you can take on board because of its capacity. But driving it from this position, you can see all points. So when you have the seats opened up because they are movable, you can see straight to the transom. You can see through the windscreens, get to the sides and get to the bow quite easily by going forward and aft because we just have this one helm chair here. We don't have a navigator or a passenger next to us. But just covering off the helm itself, I've got two flat screens here and here. I've got my anchor operation here. I've got my digital diagnostics for the Mercury. Got all my boat switches and systems here. Leather finish, blank panel here. So if you wanted to mount some extra items, I'm sure you could there. There's your emergency cutoff. There's some charging. That's the VHF. Those are the key starts. This is the new throttle by Mercury. You've got your active trim just there. Over here on the starboard side of the throttle, just come up and just make sure you guys can have a look in here. That's where the uh, uh, spotlight is, two drink holders, the joystick and lots of flat space. Ordinarily that could be an issue on a boat, um, but because this thing just doesn't rock around, you can just put your phones here and it won't be a problem. They're not really gonna slide around, particularly if you've got a phone cover on them. Um, it's gonna give you some grip. You can lay a lot of things and most drinks will just stand up here. Not a problem, even especially in a waterway like this at speed, won't be an issue. So we've got ventilation through here. And I'll tell you what, we need it today because she's hot, um, but we do have the possibility to put the windscreen clears just in here so this can all be protected because if it was pissing down with rain you would get some rain in your face here at the helm so just factor that in you can uh, quite easily zip these in and out so if you're in an area or if you've got rain forecast for the end of the day you might just put this one on just so you have some protection at the helm so just factor that in um, on the port side you have a bigger seat so it's got a flip up bolster, same as the helm seat, but that's me sitting down there. So you could have two of me's or just one person being quite comfortable and lots of space for passing through. That companion way in the middle is quite, uh, quite beamy and a lot of space here for relaxing, putting your arm there, putting items there, not a problem. Grab holes just there. Under here is the bin. So that just operates like so. Put some bin bags in there, and that's nice and convenient. Got my sweat towel in here. Oh, that's where that stores. <laughs> but it also operates as the sink. So this just folds up, and we've got a single Force 10 electric burner just here, but you could also do an electric gr a grill, like a Barbie, um, just here if you choose. This is hot and cold, drink holders, and then this is a Corian with a heat uh, plate just there, but it's got an electric cut off if you close it and the heat is still on for safety. And then when this is 
closed like so, you have all of this workable space, more drink holders on this side, and you can even do your, like, your salt and pepper shakers and your tomato sauce and stuff just up there. Deep storage in here and a second fridge. It's not like the small drawer fridge we saw before. This is a proper deep one, like so. Come in and have, have a look at that. And then we are repeating that fridge over on the starboard side, just aft of the skipper. So same again, and then you've got all of this workspace up here. So just, just picture all of this. You don't have to prepare food. Like there's a lot of pull up restaurants around this part of the world. We have the same thing um, down under. So, you know, you could pull up and just get big platters, get your seafood platters and just load up in these areas and people could come and help themselves. And I'll tell you what, if you need to do a long run and jump after lunch, this is the perfect boat to do it. It's uh, perfectly set up for swimming, but we're gonna get to that in a second. So now we're in the middle of the boat, pay attention to all the shade. So we have shade going out to this area here and we have an extendable bimini on this boat. So we get another probably foot and a half, I would say. But in terms of the width on either side, it is all the way out to the extremity here. So everyone in this middle part of the boat and on these seats can also be shaded, but see them right now. See how we've got it in the open expansive mode. This is party mode, but if you wanted to, these people to be protected and have a lunch together, see the tracks here and here, they will actually slide in to the middle. The tables will join up and it's a more of a U-shaped seating. And instead of having the center walkthrough, we have a walkthrough on port and starboard. So a really clever use of the space. And also like, you know, if you're into some snorkeling or scuba diving, that sort of thing, you might prefer to jump into the ocean or board uh, with your heavy gear on a stern ladder like this one. So just come out the back here and we'll have a little bit of a look at the back of the boat before we make our way around the sides. Um, this is actually the ladder storage here and the whole big multi-step uh, swim ladder with teak slats will actually deploy out the back there. We have these safety rails, they will move. They've got uh, the multiple positions so we can actually close in the transom like this and then when these seats are slid into the center line we can also close off either side so we can stop kitties and dogs from ending up in the drink. So making our way around the starboard side first just come out and have a look. This is obviously one of the, uh, the transoms. This is going to be functional at the dock but if you were berthing the boat you probably would slide these seats or at least this starboard side into the center position just to give yourself some easier walk through and access to the dock. It is still possible. You've got that little step there and you can step over. It's not the end of the world, but just pay attention to that. If you're a bit dodgy on your feet, just want to uh, set the boat up you know, beforehand before you go approaching the dock. A shore power plug-in is just on starboard here. We've just got the bilge pump just back here. We've got fuel in on starboard and pop-up cleat just here. The other reason I would favor starboard if I can is because we also have a side opening door. So that opens inwards, operated very easily just from here. And you're not gonna open that too easily with this door here. You do actually probably wanna see, make sure that's slid across. So not the end of the world. As I said before, I would want this slid into the center position if I'm operating it anyway. Now, below uh, both hatches, the one on starboard, and then there's another one on port because we're a catamaran, there's one in each hull. We have our battery operation on starboard and then we've got our Fisher Panda Jenny on port. So the hatches open up and we can get access into both of those. And obviously, because we're a catamaran, we also have replicated bilge pumps on the port side, same as we saw on the starboard because they're separate hulls. So just remember that as well, guys. Um, so we've got some diesel in now. Petrol outboards, why would we have a diesel in? That's because of the Jenny. The Jenny runs on diesel, so it's got its own small diesel tank. It's a Fisher Panda, it's insulated. We've been running it and exhausts out on the port side. And above that, that's the petrol. You Americans will call that gas. So um, that's gonna be for the port tank. Then you've got the starboard tank on the other side running uh, the twin 350s. We're running the Verados. You can do the V10s. The new Mercs um, uh, will fit on this one, not a problem. But you can also do the V8 300. So that's an option as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take you up the port side, just so you can see uh, what the access is like forward and aft, because there's some 
cool things going in a styling sense, but also from a functionality point of view. You've got your fuel shutoffs just in here. And if you're going forward, you've got a, a grab handle along here, which is also a windbreak and it's see-through because it's perspex. So we've got good looks of the boat is re retained. We've got a windbreak and we also have a grab handle. And if you're stepping up this one step here, there's a window into the cabin. You can hang on there or you can hang on here and then come on up with me. You've also got a grab handle up forward here. So you're just going up those two stairs and just pay attention to the amount of space we have here. So you've got things to hold on to, plenty of space, another small step. And remember you're on a really, really stable platform. She's just not gonna rock around as much as your last boat, I guarantee it. So moving around is not a problem. That upholstery is hot on my feet. And check out the roof before we make our way into the cabin. So just look back and look at the amount of real estate. That's the theme we've got on this boat, it's real estate. So this one's got a mast, we've got a couple of domes there, we've got the radar, we've got the spotlight, we've got the nav, and we can see the VHF. And I guarantee um, you could do some toys up there as well, guys, if that's important to you. So if you want to do your surfboards, if you want to do your sup boards, that's an option. But on either side, because we replicate the same thing on starboard, you might just lie them down there when they're inflated or if you're using the hard boards, that could be another option for you as well. So I think I've covered everything up here. Yes, that looks like it. Come on, let's go downstairs. We'll check out the port cabin, then we'll make our way across to the starboard side. So sliding companionway doors on port and starboard, you can uh, lock them in the open position. Then you come on down these one, two, three, uh, four stairs. Come on down and check this out, guys, because uh, it's, it's very impressive the amount of luxurious space we have in what is it, a power cat. Normally you should not be able to do this back in the day, have uh, two couples be very well catered to uh, on a boat of this size. So we've got this probably a queen size bed. We've got some cross flow ventilation through hatches here and here. There's another one forward and it is an air conditioned space. We've got down lights, we've got reading lights. We have this little space in the middle here, which just gives you a little bit easier access. You've got to get up in the night. You've got some cupboards here and here. You could sit down and put your shoes on there. You can get into the bilge on the center line. Good amount of flat working space for putting things. That's useful. Uh, I mentioned the cupboards for your bags and a little bit of shelf space in here. Microwave, a little bit more storage, probably for safety gear to be fair. Big stand up mirror to check yourself out. And then I think what is one of the most impressive parts is the loo because it's proper privacy on this boat. Two adult couples can go away for a proper holiday with a separate shower, proper loo, look at the vanity, come, come and have a look at all this. You know, it's, it's good quality, fancy stuff with the big mirror there. We've got the hang up the towel. You can do the shower thing up and down. You can even sit down uh, in the shower and possibly do this underway at speed. I, I would actually do that on this boat because she's so smooth. Um, you know, you got a ledge here for your shampoos. You can put some towels there, AC, opening port, and another opening deck hatch just here and a Perspex shower screen. So that's fantastic. Let's go check out the other side. It's basically a mirror, mirror, uh, mirror image, I should say. Uh, but come on down, so you go up and then down. Bridge deck clearance is pretty high on this boat. We didn't hear too much slapping going through waves and then we swam underneath it and saw it. But this is how you operate the Jenny. That's your main control for the fusion. Then you've got water pressure. That's the Jenny, that's the inverter, and that's the power distribution just there. Light switches, come on in. So I've got the, um, I've got the, uh, the, wind, the blind closed just to give you a different perspective. So we're just running on the electric light on this one, but there is a little uh, a little window aft. We've got the cupboards again, basically everything we saw on the other side. We do have a screen just here if you wanna do block out and privacy, and then we have opening port just there. But just actually pass me the camera, I'll just show you guys this time rather than me getting in there, and I'll just let you appreciate same again, so it's a mirror image of what we saw on the port side. So, what do you guys reckon? Let's let's head on up. Whew, it's hot today. Your summer's supposed to be over, but I, it is stinking hot. But it's good, it's boat weather. Um, what do you reckon? I'll leave, 
leave a comment in the description below. I, this is a complete departure from the history of four winds. Um, you know, if you remember the old four winds vistas, they were super sexy, quite premium finish. Um, sports cruisers, I sold many of them over the last 20 years on my brokerage and we always did really, really well. But they had disadvantages. You know, when we can move into the outboard age, when you look at the fuel consumption and the amount of effort that you have to apply to that style of boat from a maintenance perspective, it is a disadvantage. And then when you look at the amount of real estate that we've got on a thing like this, the possibility of extended range on a thing like this, and the possibility of two private cabins, as opposed to having an open plan layout, which is what you probably would have seen and still do on many monohull style of boats. Maybe this is gonna be your future. Let me know, I wanna hear all about it. Um, if you wanna see how this boat drives, we are going for a test drive right now. You're invited. Um, I'm gonna pop a link on the screen somewhere right now. Please click on it if you're interested. Do support the Patreon. My name's Dan Jones. You've been watching Dan's Boat Life. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one somewhere in America. I love this place.